everything. Hey guys, so today we're going to be doing the JavaScript section of Solo Learn. I just got done doing their PHP section and I really liked it. I want to share it with you guys. So we're going to go ahead and jump into courses here. They have a ton of different things on here. It's also an Android and iOS application, so you can do this on your phone uh, if you prefer to do that. I'm just more of a computer guy, and I'm trying to make a video, so I gotta do it on the computer. Uh, but it would be very easy to do it on there. So you'll see they have C++, Java, Python, JavaScript, PHP, C Sharp, Swift Fundamentals, Ruby, CSS, HTML, and SQL. So lots of different things. One of the cool things about uh, actually completing it, you can go ahead and add it to your, it, this will add it automatically to your certification section of your LinkedIn. So if your, your resume is looking a little uh, a little empty and you need just a little bit of filler, um, you know, go ahead and add that there as well. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the JavaScript tutorial here. So let's zoom in a bit. Module one overview, let's go, let's get started. So you'll see it has like a short little career path, not career path, but um, kind of a, a table here to get going. Um, we'll jump in. So um, let's go ahead and jump into introduction to JavaScript. So welcome to JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript is basically takes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and combines it all to make web, web applications or websites. Um, JavaScript's main function is the behavior and interactivity. Okay, so you, you'll see that we get quizzes like this, and some uh, I haven't done this before, but I'm I'm all right with uh, JavaScript, so uh, I should be able to answer most of these. Although technical questions is somewhere something that I extremely lack. One second, it's getting a little hot in here. Had to close the window, or excuse me, the blinds. All right, so starts going on talking about JavaScript. You have the web page, then the web browser. Uh, here are a few examples of what you can do with JavaScript. You can display information based on time of day, detect the visitor's browser, validate form data, create cookies, change page contents dynamically. <coughs> Excuse me. All, all things that we'll be doing in JavaScript here. <coughs> so JavaScript runs in the browser, doesn't run in the cloud, and doesn't use C++. <coughs> it's considered a client-side language. So there's client-side and server-side language. PHP, for instance, is a server-side language. You have to have a server running it, while client-side runs in the browser, which JavaScript does. On a user's computer, rather. It runs locally, is the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> All right, uh, so there are server-side stuff, such as Node.js, uh, which will run, and there's uh, other uses of applications are Acrobat and Photoshop. I didn't know that. I didn't know uh, Acrobat or Photoshop used JavaScript. Um, so in this tutorial, we're going to talk about classic JavaScript, a client-side language that adds interactivity to web pages, which is what JavaScript is, right? Is JavaScript used in general purpose and server-side applications? So it can be used in both, right? Although it's primarily used on the client side. Yeah, so one of the great things about JavaScript is that you can just get a text editor set up and going. Unlike other like server side languages where you may have to set up an environment and all that sort of stuff, uh, you don't really need to do that. Um, in this tutorial, it looks like they use Notepad++, which is a text editor. Nice, so uh, creating your first JavaScript. That's an awkward way of saying that. So JavaScript lives in an HTML document. So as we were saying, HTML and CSS are linked in JavaScript. You're going to set up a standard text document to do that. Um, you don't have to if you're just going to console.log or return the value, but uh, it does live in an HTML file because it, it works in the DOM, or the document object model, which works within the HTML. To um, do uh, to insert tags, so typically how uh, when you're getting started, you'll just use script tags like this, which basically means run our JavaScript right here. That's basically all that's going on there. Um, so you have a script tag, or run JavaScript within here would be a better way of putting it. So you'll see right here we have the document dot write hello world. This is JavaScript that's just gonna output hello world. 
So please type in context. So we're document.write, hello world. Very nice. And you'll notice there's comments on here as well. So there might be other people who are going to say stuff and contribute. You can check that out as well. Just like in HTML, we use HTML tags to format text in JavaScript. For example, we can output the text as heading. So document.write, h1, h1, hello world. So you'll see that we can output the HTML like so. What choice can be added with the text to be displayed? Formatting tags. Very nice. So if you didn't know that you could actually output uh, HTML tags, uh, you can. So adding JavaScript to a web page. So again, we're talking about the script tag inside of the header this time where we're going to actually import a file instead of putting it directly, which is the more common way of doing it. So the, tip script, the script tag is typically placed in the head tag where you put a lot of your resources, maybe it's fonts and style sheets and things like that. Alternatively, in JavaScript, in the body tag, uh, we can put a script tag as well. So it looks like you can improve page loading because HTML display is not blocked by scripts loading. Interesting. I never thought about that. Uh, where else is the script? In the body tag. So apparently, you can also do that. Typically, you'll put it in the header. Um, Script tag can take two attributes. It can take the language, because there may be other languages that you're putting in. Uh, in this case, it's uh, JavaScript. And then you can put type as text slash JavaScript. Uh, so apparently this language attribute is deprecated and should not be used. So ignore this. You don't need to put this, which is what I was thinking, because I never do this. I work with JavaScript daily. Uh, instead, just go ahead and use the type. But if you see that, that's probably what's going on. That's probably some shit you would use in IE since that shit's so outdated. Um, the type attribute is also no longer required as JavaScript is default HTML scripting language. Ah, I didn't know that. So we can get rid of this also. You can just have a script and it will know that it's JavaScript by the, um, by the, uh, the type of file it is. What attribute and value is used along with that? So in this case, uh, we're going to have type. Oops, make sure you type it out right. So you'll see now you can also type these things out, which is equal to text and JavaScript. Nice. We're doing a hat trick here as uh, we're unlocking achievements. You also get a little bit of score as you go up with this sort of stuff. So let's see here. Scripts can also be placed in external files. So you can also, you know, kind of chain your scripts along and use scripts in one area. So what is the extension used for a JavaScript file? It's .js. External JavaScript from the file src. So if you're using the external script, put the name of the script file in the src attribute. So if you're linking to something, you need to go ahead and say where that file is, right? Before, we were just using script tags and putting the, the um, JavaScript directly in it. Now we're actually linking to stuff. And you'll see, you'll see right here, external scripts cannot contain script tags. OK, that makes sense. Apparently, you can't. You, so you can't link to a file that links to another file. You need to include all that links, perhaps, on your index page or el elsewhere. So what attribute of the script tag is used for adding external uh, that would be our SRC or the source, right? So where's your file located? It's located at the source, which you then pass in a URL for. Uh, what is the result of the previous example? Did I include it? This is an alert box. You can place several script references in the header body, whichever you prefer. The script will behave as is located exactly where the script tag is located. Placing a JavaScript in an external file has advantages. It separates HTML and your code. So that's why you do it, right? You, you could obviously put all your JavaScript in one, one thing most of the time, but it's gonna get so complicated and so long that it makes more sense to separate things out. And that's how you, you, know, that's how you actually do it in the real world. So um, it's easier to read and maintain and cache JavaScript files can speed up page loads, okay? So uh, please add the corresponding words to the external sample.js file to the web page. So uh, uh, we are putting in our script tag. We're then putting in the type. 
and then we are putting in the source as where the file is located and then comments in JavaScript so comments are a crucial part of any coding language you're gonna to want to comment things and so that you know usually above the code always above the code so that when another developer is looking at your code or you're going back to your code you can actually understand what the hell is going on um, so in uh, so in JavaScript two slashes uh, is a single line comment meaning the comment will only span for that one line now if you need to use a multi-line comment it's star it's slash star and star slash nice uh, so at the end of uh, at the end of each one of these modules you'll get a little quiz um, what are three core languages in web pages so you have HTML CSS and JavaScript not to say that PHP isn't used but I wouldn't say it's a core language in JavaScript please fill in the missing commands to add the file code.js to there so we have our type we have the source and then we have our closing script tag Why is JavaScript code being placed just before the closing body tag? So this is going to allow the web page to fully load with the browser window. Cool. So up next, we'll do basic concepts. Um, and then we'll continue on. And we'll get our little certificate eventually to add to our LinkedIn. And uh, eventually, we'll knock out all these, show that we're very interested in hardworking and learning individuals, and make our LinkedIn look a little bit sexier in the process. Uh, but a lot of good stuff, and pretty it covers a lot pretty quickly, if it's anything like the PHP course, is it breaks it down in such a way that it's just showing you the stuff you actually need to know and a lot less fluff, which is what, what I like about it. And you can probably do one of these courses in an afternoon if you really push yourself or two. two. But as always, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and support me on Patreon. And keep an eye out for our weekly Friday interviews that we do with developers called Behind the Code. Uh, very excited. This is going to be our first weekly series where we're going to interview a developer, a designer, you know, a full, st a full stack front end, the whole spectrum of tech with project manager. It's going to be a new person every week, and we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Check that out at Fridays. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. If you're interested in a coding boot camp, why don't you check them out where they include housing alongside their tuition so you can get up, go, and immerse yourself in the environment. If you want to support me, go over to patreon.com slash codingtutorials360 so we can put out more content. Thanks for watching.